Hey everybody, welcome to Brickfall to end. Uh, this is another Sunday episode for top 10 Lego mocks of the week. This is all basically just cool stuff I happen to see. It is entirely my opinion and feel free to agree or disagree in the comment section below. Also remember to stick around for the end of the episode where you guys, the creators, submit your own creations. And if you want to submit mock pictures to us, check out the link in the video description below for the proper email to send them to us. And okay, getting right into it, the very first build, uh, number 10 in the top 10 list is No Face by Dog God. This is a simple little build based on a character from the animation Spirited Away. And there's a few things that I like about this quite a lot. First, it's very clean. It also seems like it could actually be minifigure scale, not like that particularly matters, but really what's more important is that the uh, pieces used to create the face and the body have been scaled very, very well. The mask in the front of the face is extremely recognizable, and what's wonderful is we've got a couple of little hidden features. First, the head opens up and we can see the hidden mouth on the inside Side. It's great that this feature is so well hidden. It almost feels like sort of an extra add-on. What's even extra about that is that there's a container on the inside where you can uh, store things. This is based on a tiny little uh, toy that was actually based on the character. A uh, piggy bank, really. And I think the designer managed to uh, put this into Lego form extremely well. Next up, number nine, is a build called A City of Sand, Wind, and Time by Sweet Sha. It's being described as something called sand punk, not quite steampunk, and that's because this build includes a lot of the gears and the gold that we're used to seeing from steampunk, but of course now there's just a lot of sand, sandy architecture, and of course just a lot of other organic desert elements uh, mixed about. What I love is that all the buildings are windmills, and here you can see a lot of domed tops, similar to how mosque architecture is, and then amidst all that we have some very interesting uh, colorful kinds of characters walking about the marketplace. Also did I point out that there's a gigantic clock just resting right in the middle? It's definitely a very surreal sort of uh, atmosphere and I think the builder sort of established a very unique and different kind of world. Something that I haven't quite seen the same way before. Now we're jumping down to number eight on the list. This is a very unique one. It's called Hill Giant Cattle Farmer by David Zambito. From what I can tell, it seems this uh, cattle farmer has been interrupted by this gigantic hill giant, and it's a wonderful brick-built figure that we got going on. Starting at the head, you can see a very interesting seed piece, which is actually a teddy bear that's been turned around that makes up the nose, and well, just uh, that and some minifig arms have uh, created a very sort of expressive and odd face that I didn't really think I'd be seeing. The hair in the back is, I believe, shark fins or some sort of a tooth piece, and the rest of the body is just made up of a lot of nice sloping bricks, excellent detail with the cow skull uh, wrapped around the neck, and it seems this hill giant hasn't been too nice to the cattle farmers in the past. It's a wonderful scene with the uh, giant looking like he's inside the actual fence of the cow pen, and uh, we've got our cattle farmer. Uh, looks like he's running for his life. According to the description, the seed part is actually all the curved pieces in red used for the boots, which makes the use of that teddy bear piece on the face all the more impressive. Now this next build, uh, number seven on the list, also reminds me of another Miyazaki movie, Howl's Moving Castle, and this is called Game Over by Jap Zap. This build actually came from a uh, tournament, uh, sort of a build off between him and another builder. And what we have is a, a house, a moving house or stone cottage that seems to be uh, trudging through a sort of uh, interesting and otherworldly atmosphere. I've seen similar stone detailing making up the walls and stuff for this particular kind of cottage build, but to see it posed in a somewhat um, organic and, well, real-life uh, figure type um, situation is entirely unique, and we've got some great detailing that actually makes up, makes up sorry, the build for the cottage at the top, specifically the thatched roof there, and I think it was an excellent choice to keep the purple highlights kind of going throughout the build, making these uh, sort of leaning and tilting trees also purple on the outskirts of the, uh, of the base plate, or base build. Jumping down to number six, this is a build called, well, Akira 2019 Neo Tokyo Tetsubo City. But really what we're looking at is uh, one of the opening shots from the movie Akira, where this is actually supposed to be a cross section or a bird's eye topographical view of what Neo Tokyo actually looks like. And within the art direction of the uh, screenshot, everything looks basically just completely gray and the water in the bay here is uh, a perfect reflection of the blue sky. Personally, it doesn't really matter 
matter to me that the uh, build is based on a, a movie that I particularly like. What's so wonderful is the actual cross section of this beautiful miniature city that we have as the build itself. I'm sure fans of uh, the architecture line that build in solid white uh, could appreciate something like this with everything being just gray. So really what you're left with is just an impression of how everything is supposed to look from a, a very, very small scale. And this makes it a bit more uh, difficult for the builder because he relies entirely on texture and just the implication of shapes. The builder here, by the way, is Marco Gan. And this is one of the best miniature city landscapes I think I've seen. All right, we're about halfway through the mocks. Number five is a builder that we've definitely showcased a number of times uh, in the past. Here is a MIDI scale Ewing by Tim Goddard. Well, really it's a MIDI scale Ewing and a couple of X-Wings. And this is a particular building size that always kind of catches my eye a little bit more than something that might be either minifig scale or super mini scale. Sometimes this uh, MIDI size can give just as much detail as something that is a lot larger, but still remain relatively compact packed and uh, that is just the case that we have with this particular Ewing and I gotta say uh, I believe the effect is also achieved very well with these X-Wings. On a personal note I'd say the Ewing is I think my favorite new Star Wars ship. I like it more than anything that came from episode 1, 2, or 3. It just feels like it kind of fits a little bit better into the Star Wars universe in terms of build style and general design and based on the number of uh, Lego builders that have also embraced uh, building up this particular ship I would say uh, Plenty probably agree with me in that count. Not much more to say about this particular build, I just think it works so well in this size. Now moving on to number four, honestly I don't know how I put this in number four on my list, I really really like these builds. And coming in at number four, and honestly now that I think about it, maybe I should have put this closer to number one, but we have a couple of hover cars built by Goal Plays with Lego. Recently in a 2017 Speed Champion set we had a great sort of curved roof that went down in the front of the four. GT. And here we've got a similar kind of design, but it looks like our builder sort of expanded on this curved front. And this is one of the smoothest and cleanest downward slopes I've ever seen in such a small scale. It really is just one of the nicest looking small scale cars I've ever seen. Our classic spoiler pieces that usually go onto the backs of the cars are used to kind of be these flaps that cover the hover devices where the wheels uh, should have been or could have been. And in terms of general, just fun, sleek, sporty design. This is right up my alley. There's a very, very good chance I'm going to be pouring over these images uh, in my free time and trying to recreate what this guy has done. No guarantee I'm going to be getting even close to um, as good of a outcome that we have right here. But I can say these two sets of cars have truly inspired me to sit down in the Lego room uh, this weekend and just kind of mess around. Now, number three is something of a build where I still look at it and just go, what? How, how, how did this happen? It's called Jack and the Mayor by Monstrophonic. This is Jack Skellington's house from Nightmare Before Christmas. And I just still look at this build and I just don't believe it. Not only does this look spot on to what his house is supposed to look like in the uh, claymation animation. I mean, all the details are there, but really I think you're probably thinking what I'm thinking. How the heck does this thing stay up? This must be the perfect balance design, and even then, guaranteed this is probably a very stressful build to have up on display anywhere in your house. One false move on a rickety table, heck, here in California with the occasional mini earthquake, this thing probably has a good chance of coming tumbling down. All right, we're just down to the last two. A number two in the lineup is called Devastator Walker Mech by Bob DeQuatre. Now, tons of mechs and robots and walkers are built in LEGO all the time. It's probably one of the more popular builds. And what's so wonderful about this particular one is not only does it look like a wonderful, awesome looking walker, lots of great details, plenty of smooth and rounded bricks that match up in uh, the joint areas and an altogether uh, intimidating looking build. But what's so great is check out this video that he made. It's totally electronic. The legs have a wonderful realistic motion and it looks like the abdomen has the ability to kind of uh, twist and turn about. Also the torso turns and the lights in the front turn on and off. That is so many different electronic functions and it's hidden within uh, a build that is scaled to the point where it almost feels like it would be impossible to fit all these functions in such a small space. 
but they all fit, and that is a sign of a truly talented builder. And all right, in this episode, we've actually had a lot of very familiar names popping up, um, people that we featured uh, several times before on the channel, but this is the first time I've ever featured this particular builder, and it's for a truly amazing build. This is the Golden Gate Bridge. It is a 12-foot long Lego build, and it is done by the designer Rocco Butlier. Now, being from the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm not going to say that there isn't any sort of nostalgic bias for me uh, to put this at number one, but I think you'll agree when I say that this is a truly amazing build, and you might think so even more once I tell you that the bridge itself in the center is suspended in a realistic way, the same way that the real Golden Gate Bridge is actually suspended in reality. I mean, perhaps you could uh, guess that when you look at the center of the bridge and you see that there really isn't anything underneath that could possibly be supported up all that Lego that's uh, way out towards the center. And when you look at it from the long point, you see there is a little bit of an arc or a bowing that kind of starts at the uh, two different base towers of the bridge. And that just shows kind of uh, where the tension is a little bit tighter in all of these strings and where it's a little bit looser. I believe this builder is uh, studying some sort of architecture or engineering and definitely is no stranger to uh, creating Lego structures. But in the description, you'll see that this is the very first bridge Ever created by our builder and that just feels all the more impressive well I suppose that is it now for the uh, Lego top 10 mocks of the week I hope you enjoyed uh, the different builds that you saw let me know uh, what you thought was your favorite in the comment section below and now it is time to show you guys the uh, fan mock creations if you want to submit your own Lego creations uh, check out the video link in the description below and that'll direct you towards the proper email so anyways um, here are all of the fan mocks mm -hmm. 